In this evening, we say a warm welcome to all our guests, our family and friends. And I pray that the blessing of the Lord, the presence of God, the peace of God fills our hearts to the knowledge that he wants us to understand who he is and to fulfill our life in accordance to his will. Amen. As um, the first couple of guests were called out, I was sitting down there and I was thinking about it just before uh, Pastor Benny mentioned uh, uh, the remainder, uh, Ryan, Evodia and Ray. Pray the, ble- the Lord to bless you guys. Um, we had James, Andrew and Matt. You're probably looking at me and going, gee, where's he going with this? And I thought, wow, these are really godly names. And even more so, I really kind of, in the back of my head, said, you know what? They're actually apostles. Did you know that? They were apostles. So, I don't know. Maybe let's think about it. I pray for the Lord to bless each and every one of you to come to the revelation of God's truth. Maybe there is something there. Maybe God is planting a seed tonight. But either way, I pray that God is blessed through us and that he's glorified to everything that we do. God bless you. In this evening, we're focused upon these two beautiful families. Brother Velson, Denisa, she's out at the moment, and uh, Brother Darius and Melanie, God bless you. As you are, you're probably no doubt nervous. The center of attention is on you um, and your beautiful child, Isla and, and uh, Livia. We pray the Lord to bless them. And, you know, we do our part, but we're believing that God is going to meet us. Amen? We're believing that God is going to pour his blessing and give life and speak life into that young child, into that beautiful creation that God has given to us. And so we're joyed this evening, and we pray that God will bless our hearts as we engage with the Word of God, because the Word of God has power to help us, has power to restore, has power to give life. And so we're looking at this particular um, story in the Bible, a very old story, uh, and some of you are probably going, okay, Abraham. You know, some of you, you know a little bit about Abraham, kids, yeah? We've heard many stories, many stories. That's great, fantastic. And so we're looking at this man, this man of God. Now, he wasn't a young man. He was probably a bit older than yourselves. But one thing that's really interesting is this. He steps out and he hears the voice of God. And so my message that I really, I felt the Holy Spirit leading me towards was that a Christ-centered family, a Christ-centered family needs to be a family that is hearing from God. Amen? A Christ-centered family, if we're saying, Lord Jesus, we want you to be at the center of our existence, the center of our family, it needs to be a church that hears the voice of God. And so looking upon this, I thought, in relation to our families, in relation to um, what is going on in the church, no doubt, you know, we're looking for these, these beautiful young families here that is before us, already mentioned. Um, look, they want the best for their child. They're sitting here and they're saying, God, we want you to bless our child. We want the best for the child that is, a, that is in front of us. Lord, we want your protection. We want your blessing. We want to, to grow this child in the best way possible, God, that glorifies you. Lord, help us to be good examples. I honestly believe that. And so it should be for all of us that we have this this mindset. But as we look to this particular character, and we're going to look to Abraham and see, Lord, what is it that we can learn in this evening with regard to this man that can be beneficial for us? And so I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. In some things I will go in detail. In some things uh, I won't go into greater detail, but I encourage you to look into this. So the most important thing, as I mentioned, is to hear the voice of God, okay? To hear the voice of God. In other words, to hear God speak to you. Now, God can speak in different ways, but nevertheless, if I was to ask you, when's the last time you heard the voice of God? When's the last time God has spoken to you? I mean direct, and you know that's God. You know, be it through a song or through a word or through a word of encouragement. When is the last time that God has spoken to you and encouraged you or perhaps said something to you? It is so important as children of God that we hear the voice of God. Otherwise, what happens? We go to and fro. And so my message this evening, like I said, is hearing from God, a Christ-centered family. You know, the word 
uh, that says here, says now, verse 1 says, Now the Lord said to Abraham, I'm going to stop here. Said. Everybody say said. Said. God said to Abraham. In other words, he spoke. The word that he's used in the Hebrew, Amar, hope I'm pronouncing it correct, is the same word that Moses, the author of Genesis, writes. And he says, God said. God spoke. And it's the same audible voice that we have that God is interested in communicating. And in this instance, he spoke. He spoke. So we look at it and we think that is an amazing thing. Wow, he heard from the voice of God. Praise God. And we're thinking, man, perhaps I haven't heard from God. Or or I'd like to, to hear what God is really wanting to speak to me. How did he hear the voice? I ask myself the question, how? If I'm looking through this, I'm saying, God, how did he hear your voice, God? How did he know that it was you? I mean, he was living in Haran at the time. How did he know amongst all the other voices that, God, it is you? How? What was something in him? Was there something inside of him that said, yep, that's God? How did he know? And so we look at it, like I said, there's many voices. And at first glance, when we read this, How do we understand this? A lot of times, and I'll tell you what, many Christians, many Christians, when they read this straight away, they will look at it and say, this is the first time that God has spoken to Abraham. Would you agree? Yes, maybe no, maybe not sure. And we say, look, this is the first time God speaks to Abraham, and Abraham is almost in awe because you never see him talking, you see no conversation, all right? That's, that's how many people understand it. But I want to I shed a bit of light to this because I found this very interesting and I want to I elaborate. In Acts 7 verse 2 and 4, it says, uh, Stephen shed some light into this. It says, you know, when he's defending himself. Brothers, uh, sorry, brothers and fathers, listen to me. The glory of God. Now I'm reading from the AMP. The Shekinah, the glory, radiance of God, the power of God through his glory, appeared to our Father. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. Take a sec. I thought that God spoke to him. The first thing that happened is God appeared. He did speak to him. But here, uh, Stephen really uh, brings this to light. And he says, he appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, in Ur, as it would be, before he lived in Haran. Wow. God was interested in this man and he met with this man. And so when we look at this text, it should open another light and say, wow, then where is this conversation? The way I look at it, this is a reminder. First time when we read it, we say, this is the first time God has spoken to Abraham. No, it's not. It is probably the second time, maybe third time. I don't know. But it's not the first time. God spoke to him when he was in Ur. Okay? He was there, part of the Chaldean region, and he spoke to him. And so it's so important to listen to the voice of God. And I'll tell you what, you can't listen to the voice of God if you don't have a relationship with God. He may speak to you. But it's so crucial to have this relationship. It's so crucial to have a relationship with the Lord, to ask for for Jesus to come into our life, to take throne of our heart and to lead us and to absolutely be in a way that we're open to listening to his voice. There are many voices, the voices that shout, voices that scream, voices that are quiet. But there is only one voice of the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and his name is Jesus. There is only one voice. And so... Interestingly, I love this how Stephen brings it out to light and he shares another perspective. In other words, this man of God, he, you know, he had a family. This man of God heard the voice of God, but more than that, he met with God. He met with God. He was in the presence of God. And so I don't know about you, but you know, you're, you're young and maybe you have other things in your minds and you, and you want to be something in life. But the most important thing that you can understand, beloved children, And beloved parents, is to hear the voice of God. In other words, to to actually understand that God wants to speak to you. God is interested in you. You're not a number. You're not a sheep of insignificance. He loves you. And he loves every single one of us. And there's a purpose behind it. All right? There's a purpose. But we just need to understand this. Now, I'm going to speak a few things and I want to hurry along. 
First thing that's so crucial to this, hearing the voice of God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list a few things, okay? Hearing the voice of God, the first thing that it does is it builds your relationship with God. Okay, make, make a note of this. Hearing the voice of God builds a relationship with God. So when you hear his voice and when you speak to him, builds a relationship. What kind of a relationship, guys, now some of you are married, most of you are married. What kind of a relationship would it be if you were to talk to your wife once a month? Not really a relationship, would it? I told you I love you. If it's going to change, I'll, I'll let you know. No, you need to remind. You need to conversate. You need to have a dialogue. If there is no dialogue, it dies. It is finished. You're finished. Or you're sleeping in the garage. Either way. It is done. So you need to have this relationship. The first thing that is so crucial, hearing the voice of God will produce, and we need to have this relationship with God. We need to have this connection with God, this connection with our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, he appeared to Abraham. He showed himself. And if you ask and you say, God, and you're honest, Lord, show me who you are. Lord, I want you to appear to me. It might not be like in Moses or, uh, or, in, or in, for example, even with um, Abraham, but he will reveal himself. He will show himself if you seek him. And if you seek him with what? All your heart, with everything. You say, God, I want to know. And so... This is so, such an important truth that a Christ-centered family needs to hear from God. And it builds this relationship. Beloved, as you're getting closer to the Lord and as you're wanting to hear from God, you realize that your relationship together, husband and wife and children, and in connection with God, you become closer and closer to God. And this is the whole point. This is an amazing thing. right? Exodus 6.3 says, I appeared to Abraham. I appeared to Abraham. But... And he continues on, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a passage I'll leave out, but it says, but by my name, Lord, I did not make myself known to him. In other words, I didn't tell him exactly who I was, but he knew, he knew. So it is so important to understand that God appeared and he spoke. And God through the presence of the Holy Spirit today, appears and still speaks. And he wants to have a relationship with you. What I love about this is that God reached out to Abraham. God reached out to us while we were still in sin. Christ died for us. He could have said, you know what? You guys are filthy. You guys are dirty. You deserve death. But no, he paid the ultimate price to bring us back into a relationship with him. God is worthy to be praised because he wants us in a relationship. He wants us to be in a connection with him. He wants our families to be healthy families. He wants a church to be a healthy church. He wants us to be healthy because all of this is part of God's plan to bring us closer to him and to bring us in a fellowship and a relationship with him. This is the important thing. And you see, God saw value in Abraham. And I tell you what, so many times we look at ourselves and we see, man, what's the point? What, what good is there in me? What good can I offer? And so many times we write ourselves off. Well, let me tell you some good news. Is that God sees you for who you will be, not for who you are at the moment. So many times we realize, you know, we feel in a certain way and, and we see that we're not worthy and so forth. And certain sin may bring us down. But I tell you what, if we humble ourselves, if we seek his face, if we remove the sin and we get closer to God, he will get closer and closer to us. And this is the important thing. Even though you are, have failures and flaws and you're gone beyond the point where we say, you know what, I'm just giving up. There's no point. There is a point. Because Christ reached out to you when there was no point, when you were hopeless, when it was all far gone because he loves you and because there is a purpose to your life. Every single one of us, not to the preacher, not to the singer, but to every single person. You have value and you have great worth in the eyes of Jesus. And so it's important to understand this truth. Such an important thing. He wants to get closer to you. So many times, you know what? We don't realize God is yearning for us and he's saying, come close to me, come close to me. And we, we're too busy sometimes. He wants, he wants us to hear from him because that builds our relationship. The second thing it does is hearing from God, as Abraham did, hearing from God gives us direction. You know, there's so many people that are lost today. I'm not talking about people that are outside of church. I'm talking about people that are inside of church. You know, they're, they're not sure which way to go. They're confused what their purpose really is. Um... You know the problem is, Abraham here, if you look very closely, 
He was in Ur, okay, and then he went to Haran. Now, Haran, okay, was a place in between Ur and Canaan. And he, the Bible says, you know what it says? He settled there. And so many times for us, when God tells us to do something, when God tells us to do something, perhaps we don't listen, and we become comfortable. Haran symbolizes comfort. Haran symbolizes comfort. You know what? We just, we go to church. We do our thing. We do the bare minimum. So many times even some people say, what do I need to do, you know, as, as the rich young ruler said, to get into heaven? Like, what, what is the minimum? What, what do I need to do? What's the point? I don't need to exceed it. I just want to know, how do I get in there? And so, so many of us, perhaps we're living in, this, in a comfort zone, in an area which suits us. And another thing that Haran symbolizes is idolatry. We see that Terah, which is Abraham's father, worshipped other gods in these area. He was an idolatrous person. And so Haran represents, attached to this comfort, is idolatry. What's idolatry? Taking your eyes off God and focusing on anything but God. Giving your heart to money. Giving your heart to a car. Giving your heart, it could be a family. Giving your heart, the best of you, to something other than God. And so God is concerned because when you hear from God, He gives you direction. He gives you a purpose and He gives you a way which you need to go. But sometimes we just get stuck. And the Lord wants to unstuck us. Get us out of the muck. Get us out of where we are and tells us to keep going. But you know what? The Bible says He settled there. He settled there. It's so important, you see, listening to God changes our perspective. You know, I mean, really listening to God changes our perspective. You know, I've mentioned this. Think of Jairus, right? His daughter died. And the, the servant said, you know what? Don't, forget Jesus. Don't worry about Jesus. As they were walking to the house, he said, don't worry about Jesus. He said, your daughter's dead. There's no point. What did Jesus say? Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid, for your daughter will be made well. Don't. Take it easy. It's fine. So many a times, you see, our perspective will change when we listen to the voice of God. And so important because a lot of things are a matter of perspective. It's a matter of perspective. Look at David and Goliath. You look at this image. The people were shivering in their boots. They see this man, this Terminator. I think he probably would be a modern day Terminator. Absolutely wipe out anything. You would not stand in, in front of him. You'd be intimidated to, to the core you know, I think a lion would be scared. And I think lions are quite scared, right? This thing was a machine. And the people were terrified in their boots. Scared. They said, oh my goodness, look how big he is. And David comes into the picture and he says, exactly, I can't miss. Look how big he is. I'm going to hit him. doesn't matter. Just throw it. My God is bigger than all the problems. You see, it's a matter of perspective. When we have a direction from God, it doesn't matter. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear. I will not fear. And such an important truth that we carry this with us. You see, Joshua 24.3 says this, Then I, and it's talking about God, took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land. You see, this is such an important truth, is that when we have a direction from God, he leads us. He leads us. Three, hearing from God, beloved family, and this is such an important thing, increases our faith. Do you want to increase your faith? Do you want your faith to just be, you know, like, absolutely to a next level where you really believe on God. When God says, look, it's written here and we believe God with all our heart. We don't have any hesitation. We don't go, oh, is there a possibility? No, we know because God's word is tried and tested. And so it's important for us when we understand that if we hear the voice of God, if we have a relationship with God, he increases our faith. The Bible says, by faith, Abraham. By faith, Abraham. Now put your name there, in your story, in your life, by faith, John, by faith, Mary, by faith, Elizabeth, by faith. We need to stand up and have faith and increase our faith. We can't do it on our own. We can't do it on our own wisdom, but we need to have faith. It says, by faith, 
Abraham, when he was called, he obeyed by faith. It's so important. You know, we have so many resources today. Guys, we're so blessed. We've got more than what we need. In fact, perhaps we've got too much, right? We've got a lot of resources. But the most important thing is, is God's word and understanding that, you know, God still speaks even through his word. We neglect that. We say, God, we want you to speak to us like you spoke. Yeah, but God can speak. Problem is, is we, we want God to speak in a certain way and God speaks how he wants, not how well we want. We just need to be all ears and listen to his voice. By, you know, we need faith to reach back to God. Uh, Hebrews eleven six says, but without faith, it is impossible. It is impossible to please God. If we have no faith, it is impossible. But on the upscale, when we stay in the presence of God, when we hear the voice of God, He increases our faith to know that the situation that we're facing, He is in control. He is almighty. He is all powerful. There is no one that can, that can change or thwart His plans or destroy His plans because He is on the throne. God certain, at times allows certain things, but He never loses control. You see, Romans 10 says, so faith comes through hearing and hearing the word of Christ. I believe 10, 17. So hearing the word of Christ. If you want to increase your faith, you need to have the, the word of Christ in your heart. You need to read your word. You need to pray and say, God, I want you to meet with me. I want to experience you, Lord. I want you to appear to me. I want you to, to have this relationship. But we see that through this, it increases our faith. It increases our faith. You know, the problem is in our culture, you know, we kind of say, why? God, you know, if this was us in the 21st century, we would say, Lord, why? You know why? Because the questions that we do, we, we want the why before the, we will do it. We want to understand before we will take the next step. We want to comprehend before we, we go into the next phase of our life. And so important for us to understand that faith doesn't always ask the question why, but it steps. It steps forward. It steps forward. You see... Another thing to understand is that this man, when he went, God said, go. He didn't have Google Maps with a pinned drop location. Click here for directions. Hope your Wi-Fi or your internet's really good and you'll be fine all the way to where you need to go. None of that. He just said, get out of your house, out of your relatives, out of your family, out of your country, out of everything. Go to the country that I will tell you. Just go. Just step out in faith. Step out in faith. And so it's important for us to understand that we need to, in many ways, step out in faith. We're reserved and we hold back. You see, God knows, God knows what we need better than you can imagine. You see, we think, yeah, we know what we need, right? Yeah, is that what we'd all say? We know what we need. God knows what you need better than what you know what you need. You see, and it's so important. It's so important. Um, in fact, God rarely gives us what we ask for. I don't know about you. Have you realized this? God rarely gives you what you ask for. Think about it. God rarely gives you what you ask for, but he gives you what you need. Now, there's a story. There's this uh, 70 or close to 80-year-old woman on the side of the road, and she's locked the keys in the car. She's locked the keys in the car, but she's got a coat hanger. She managed to get a coat hanger. And she's trying and she's struggling, trying to open this car that's locked. She prays. She said, Lord, I pray that you send someone to help me in this situation. It wasn't about five minutes until this man on a Harley Davidson, cranking up, full of tattoos, came straight down right next to her and he said, hey, ma'am, how are you going? You need some help? He said, yes, I do. He said, I lock my keys in the car and I can't get in. He gets off his bike and in a couple of seconds, probably 15 seconds, <laughs> door is open. She looks and she's amazed. She said, wow, you are a godsend. And he's like, whoa, 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 lady, take it easy. Take it easy. What do you mean by this? I mean, I just came out of jail for stealing cars. She turned to him and you know what she said? God didn't send anybody. He sent a professional. 
You see, when we pray and we say, God, give me what I need. Sometimes we don't know what we need, but God gives us his best. God gives us his best. We see that in the life of Jesus. He has given his best for you. He has given the best for us. We don't understand why. You know, we pray sometimes, but we don't know. Yet God knows better. So it's important for us to understand that he wants us to have this fellowship because it increases our faith. The fourth thing, hearing from God can make you obedient. You know what? We choose obedience. But when we're in the presence of God, when we're hearing from God, it makes us obedient. Okay? So like I mentioned before, God doesn't work in the comfort zone. If you say, I want to stay comfortable, I want to stay where I am, that's okay. God doesn't work in comfort. He wants us to step out. He wants us to get out of Haran. He doesn't want you to be there, but he wants you to go beyond where you perhaps were. You see, Abraham proved his obedience, not by word. Abraham didn't just say, fantastic, Lord, that's a great idea. Put it on my to-do list next year. What did he say? He went. A man of action. When God said, go, he went. A lot of times when God says go, we said, but why? Well, hang on a sec, God. Let me understand this before I go. And so it's important to understand this. It's important to understand. I mean, the distance approximately, I mean, if you look from where he was initially, from Ur, all the way to Haran, all the way to Canaan, all the way to Egypt, is about 2,400 kilometers approximately. Just to put it into perspective, 2,400 kilometers. That's walking. I'm not talking about a nice luxury car or a, a cruise or some form. No, that's camels and animals and children and desert and hunger and going through, through what they had to go through. 2,400 kilometers, that's almost Adelaide. Adelaide's 2,600. That's a long distance. But in this distance from Haran to Canaan, it was approximately about 600 and 40, they say, give or take, which is almost the equivalent of Perth to Kalgoorlie, Perth to perhaps a bit further than Kalbarri, equivalent to, to walk in the desert and to, and to do it. So you see, he was a man of action. He was a man that said, all right, God, I need to step in faith. I need to do it. My faith needs to meet with action, you see. Um, number five, hearing from God reveals his plan. This is an important truth. Beloved, when you meet with God, when God speaks to you, he reveals his plan. You see, if Abraham didn't make time for God, if Abraham didn't want to listen to the voice of God and said, you know what, it's fine. No, he listened to the voice of God and God revealed his plan. It is a wonderful truth that if you want guidance in your life, beloved, if you want direction, if you want purpose and so forth, if you want God's plan to be revealed to you, spend time with God. Spend time in the presence of our Lord Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to, to uh, show you and he will no doubt show you. The Bible says in James 2, 23, and scripture was fulfilled, which says, again, this is from the AMP, Abraham believed God and his faith was accredited to him by God as righteousness and as conformity to his will. In other words, he conformed to God's will. God's will was revealed to him and he obeyed it. But the most important thing is God showed him his will. When you, when you and I spend time with God, you see, God will reveal. He will help you in these situations when, you know what, you don't know what to do. You don't know who to turn to. You don't know which direction to go. He will be there by your side. And it's an important truth. You see, John 10, 27, I love this. It talks about... Um, talks about Jesus and he says the sheep that are my own will hear my voice the sheep that are my own will hear my voice it's so important to hear the voice of God and they listen to me I know them and they follow me the voice of the Lord such an important truth you see because when when God reveals his plan he reveals what you need to do and, and as you see in the text he revealed what he needed to do who he will become and the result of all these things and such a wonderful thing but yet what I see as well is that God revealed his plan step by step 
You see, God never says, here's the bigger picture. I'm going to tell you, you're going to do this. You're going to get married. You're going to blah, 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 blah. He doesn't give you a detailed list of everything. You know what? A lot of times, and even with us, as it says in Psalm, your word is a lamp onto my feet. What's a lamp? A lamp back then was a torch that was able to see enough as you were walking. So it was only within a distance for you to see. If you can imagine, when you're driving in your car, does your headlights from your car when you're driving at night, does it shine up all the way to your destination? No, right? It only shines in front of you so you can see where to go. And so many times with us, and I see the way that God works, is He shines what we need to see in order for us to t take these steps of faith and to go to where He wants us to be. And you see, a lot of times our plans are safer. Our plans are safer. We say, you know what, I've got this figured out. But I tell you what, even though our plans are safer, God's are the best. God's are the best. Number six, I'm going to finish with this. Hearing from God, and it's an important truth, hearing from God inspires other people. Hearing from God inspires other people and at the same time pleases God. It pleases God. Now, when we read this, there's a little, there's a little note here which I, I found very, very interesting. God tells Abraham to get out of the country and he says, your father's household, your relatives. He must have had some really bad relatives. He said, get out of here. I'll leave him alone. I don't know. I'm just saying, possibly not. But interesting thing that I pick up here is that the Bible says in verse 4, so Abraham went forth as the Lord had spoken to him and Lot went with him. And Lot went with him. Why? God told him, don't worry about it. No one, no one from your family. You see, when you hear from God, it inspires other people. When you spend time with God, it inspires other people. It motivates other people. It energizes other people. It encourages other people. And this is the purpose that when we spend time with God, we are to encourage and inspire. And we see this through what this man has done. It's such an important truth that I, that I really want to, to highlight that spending time with God and hearing from God should encourage other people, should encourage the people around you. And you see, many a times when we see Jesus, you know when he went to his disciples, right? Now, I love Mark because Mark is a man of action. He's just like, if he was directing uh, the gospel story in a film, it would be nothing but action. Just boom, 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 all the way through. Just this, that, bang, bang, boom, immediately, quickly, bang. And so you see that a lot of times, even when Jesus called, he says, immediately, they drop their nets and they follow Jesus. Now think about this. When Jesus, he spent time with the Father. He spent time with the Father, praying to the Father. He fasted. He prayed. He was in that connection with the Father. He inspired other people. He inspired other people. And such an important truth, because when other people are inspired... You know, you don't need to tell them, you need to do this and you need to do this. The Holy Spirit just works in their heart and it motivates and it encourages. And it's so important to see that as he, as he asked the disciples to follow him, they dropped everything. They dropped everything. It was an instant response. Why? Because he was hearing from God. Because he had fellowship with God. He had direction from God, revelation from God. And he inspired other people. And so people were drawn to him. And I think that as us, as children of God, should be the same thing that we draw people because of our love for Christ, because of our love for one another. It's so important, you see. Hebrews 11, 6 says, the, the last part, he rewards those who earnestly and diligently seek him. In other words, just, and the last part, bit that I mentioned, not, not only do you inspire other people when you spend time with God as a family and, and as, uh, yourselves, but it also pleases God. It pleases God. And so we see even through this verse that he rewards those who diligently seek him. In other words, they go out of their way to seek him. They do it right. They thirst and hunger. As it says in Psalm 63, I thirst for you in this dry and weary land. God, I need you in this moment, Lord God. When, when, when nothing else is a solution, God, I, I'm looking towards you. You see, the Father, another perfect image of this particular thing is... When the father saw the son and when he was baptized, he said, this is my son. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. In whom I am well pleased. When we're listening to the voice of God, when we're in obedience and direction and the revelation from God, 
You see, we please God. And it's so important for us as children of God, by hearing from God, we all as a family and collectively, it's so important for us to understand these six principles that our relationship with God will flourish. It will grow when we hear from God. You know, the direction in our life, our faith will increase and our obedience to Him will increase. And, and obviously, the revelation of God will be shown to us. And also, what it does is it produces inspiration. We encourage other people. And at the same time, we honor God because we please God. And I pray that the Lord to bless us to understand that even though this story is an old story, we can see this man that did these things and God revealed himself. God directed him. God helped him. God increased his relationships in every aspect. And you know what? God blessed him. God blessed him. If we want the blessings of God upon our lives, we need to take a step. Don't put it off for tomorrow. Don't procrastinate. Don't put it off. But today we say, Lord, we want more of your presence. Lord, we want you to speak to us. Not just tonight, but we want you to speak to us every single day and every single moment because that's why you were created, to be in the presence and to spend time with your Father. He created you in His image for a reason and a purpose. And He wants you to know that He loves you. He cares for you. And, and He's given everything He can so that you can have life. Now, it's up to you. Make the right decision to serve God and do it with all your heart. I pray the Lord to bless us all. Amen.